The draft is rapidly approaching. And, you know, so many scenarios, too many really to go over. Uh, but what, what do you base a trade on? Are you looking to get picks? Are you looking... Uh, what would you base a draft day or a weekend trade on? Yeah, you know, it, it, it always varies. You know, me personally, I like that more than less picks. But the thing you can do, if you do trades, let's say we get out of the five slot, you can pick up two or three more picks. If somebody's, you know, and then you go back to where you, if you take the guy, wherever you trade with, if somebody starts falling, a player that we have highly rated, you can take those picks that you already acquired and go back up in that round to get right, the player. You know, right. so it could go either way. Um, you know, you, you will not see us go up from the five spot this year, but we'd like to go back if possible. Right. But I also understand, too, that if some, somebody's coming to us, we need to win that trade and understand. Because we know that I have about 12 to 15 football players I feel are really good football players. They're going to come in year one and be able to produce and produce for a long time. So you can't get too cute with yourself and move too far back because then you take yourself out of that, that picture for those players. Right. You know, so now you, you, you lose now on maybe a superstar to get maybe three good players, which is okay. But that, that superstar is something that's really special. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to trade out. How about you, you're in there during the draft, first, second, or third round, and all of a sudden somebody does something wacky ahead of you? You kind of celebrate. That happens oh, yeah. all the time, no right? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You celebrate that? Well, you, you kind of smirk, but you also think, man, ah, I hope I wasn't wrong on that guy, you know, <laughs> because it makes you start thinking. But, you know, all, all 31 other teams have their own philosophies. They have their own draft board, you know, and s some places coaches are more heavily involved, some places they aren't, you know, and, you know, that can change. But th th there'll be guys even in the first round, you're like, wow, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> right. You know? You know, I, I watched your press conference on Redskins.com. Uh, at noon this afternoon, and one of the questions just seemed absurd. You know, what are you looking for in a pass rusher? <laughs> and you're, I love your answer. I'm looking for someone to tackle the quarterback. <laughs> but you always reference you're looking for a football player. Yeah. When we first met, that was kind of a theme that you conveyed to me. How do you find that out? Is it the tape? I know you guys watch the interviews over and over yeah. and over. Try to find that one thing about the guy. How do you put it all together to say, this guy's a football player? You know what? A lot of it comes in with the area scouts because they're the ones that have been following for three or four years in college, the players. They're the ones that have most of the background on them. Not all the background, but most of the stuff. And nowadays with social media, you know, you could follow Twitter accounts. You know, it's amazing the kind of stuff you can find out. But, you know, the bottom line is, you know, I, I, of course you want talent, you know. But I'll give a little on the talent standpoint. If, this, if I know this guy's intelligent, I know he's very passionate, he's very competitive, right. and he understands it's about the team and not about the individual. I will, I will give a guy that's bigger, faster, stronger, I'll, I'll pass on him and take the guy I know is consistent every day. So come in here and you know exactly what you have. And that's, that's all that research to know if a guy's a worker or no, not. No doubt about it. Another consistent point that you've made is I want big guys. Mm -hmm. And is that we're going to sit here next week, a week from today, we're sitting here, all the dust is settled. Will this be a bigger football team? Yes, it will be. Yes, it will be. It's going to be. It's going to be younger, of course, because of adding the young guys. But you know, right now we have our seven originals. It'd be nice to get to ten picks. But if not, we're still going to sign, you know, ten to fifteen college free agents who we feel really good about. And matter of fact, a lot of those guys will be on our board right now as draftable, seventh round, sixth round consideration. So those guys are. The, when you get down there, that's really exciting too. But it's, it's going to be. A, it's going to be a younger team. It's going to be a bigger team. It's going to be a more athletic team. Love hearing that. Final question for Scott McLuhan. Character is something that always comes up. And people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you hear about some of the guys out there, some of these things they might have done, and you say, well, he's just a kid, he's in college. How do you get your mind around that? You're talking about a kid who might be influenced in college, sure. or maybe he's trying to show off for his buddies sure. or something. And then all of a sudden he becomes a character issue. Is that where all this research comes in? Yeah, it is. You know, and like you said, you know, people make mistakes, you know, and that's gonna happen, especially in, in college, you know, high school or college. It's gonna happen. Um, it's inevitable, really. But it's, it's the repeat offenders are the ones right. who scratch your head, the ones that show up at the combine and might test positive, or the ones you know, that the, have been arrested three times for a suspended license, stuff like that. So and by the time you get to that, usually you can tell there's something missing there um, just by sitting down at the combine or all-star games and talking to the kids, right. how, how they come across. Um, you know, but you can't just pigeonhole everybody as a bad guy if they have a positive marijuana test one time in college as a, as a freshman or sophomore. Right. You know, but you still, it's part of the portfolio you put together, and it, and it is a red flag. But also, that's when you discuss it with him. Okay, he talks to the coaches. Was he tested regularly? Has he ever tested positive again? Stuff like that. So you do, do as much research as you possibly can, but also understand that, you know, they're, they're going to make mistakes. And, you know, you can't just throw them all because you'd be a tough time drafting guys if you just threw them all away. That's true, and people make mistakes. I lied, one more. You're sitting in there on Thursday. Are you nervous? 
Are you confident because you put it, and I know you've put it all, you couldn't have done any more getting ready for this draft, Scott McLuhan. How do you describe your feelings when you know you're on the clock? Very confident. Very confident. And people in that room that are around me that we all did our best to get to this point. And we understand that, listen, we're taking this guy, it's a franchise ownership we're taking. This guy, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure he's a good football player. From the head coach to the trainers to the doctors to myself to, to the, the pro scouts, we're all we take ownership. We're going to do anything in our power to make sure he's successful.